بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد the issue of takfir of declaring another Muslim or declaring someone to be a non-Muslim or an apostate from the religion is something that plagues our nation uh, as Muslims. It has plagued us since the time of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in and the original Khawarij, they began by making takfir of many of the Sahaba like Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhum radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and they killed Uthman and eventually uh, some of the Khawarij killed Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and this shows us as the Prophet وسلم, prophesies and let us know uh, in countless uh, a hadith, for example, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he said, Al Khawarij Kilab, uh, Al Khawarij Hum Kilab al Nar, that the Khawarij, they are the dogs of the hellfire. So this creed uh, is something that was from the early, from the generation of the Salaf, meaning that they're not from the Salaf, but they were during the time of the Salaf. They were during that time of, of the Sahaba, radiallahu uh, ta'ala anhum ajma'een. But however, they made khuruj, or they rebelled against the uh, rightly guided khalif, or khalifat, like that khalifat of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so, this is where we have the Khawarij. So the issue is this, as I just received uh, someone who just uh, wrote a statement and they, it was a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, although they didn't quite quote it exactly as accurate as, a, as, as it could have been. It was a translation of the statement, but I was able to find the statement. Alhamdulillah, and we'll read the original statement in Arabic, and then we'll translate it, and then we'll see also with this issue in general, we'll try to be as brief as possible, uh, what the Salaf al-Salih, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So first and foremost, before anyone can have a debate about these issues, you have to have an agreeance upon the source of what you're going to come, uh, come with. Is your source coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ijma salaf, or is your source coming from other than that? Maybe your source is coming from the Quran and your understanding of the Quran. Maybe it's coming from the Quran and your understanding or your Sheikh's understanding of the Quran. Maybe it's coming from some of the Sunnah, although the Sunnah is very clear about this issue, as we've mentioned on countless occasions. Go to the chapter; you can find it in English. Preferably in Arabic because then you can read the explanation of Imam Nawawi and that will give you in-depth understanding of this issue and that there is more than a hundred, I counted more than a hundred hadith in there. Some of them are, uh, you know, repeating, r repetitive in that, that bab, but they all are talking about the relationship between the leader in Kitab Imara, in the chapter of leadership in Sahih Muslim. Go to it if you have it in English and you can probably get it up free on the internet. And look at those ahadith and that should give you some comfort in the heart whenever someone is from that jamaat or whenever someone is infected by that creed, then at least you have something you can say, hey, I don't want to debate, but let's take a look at uh, Sahih Muslim, uh, chapter, the chapter of leadership. And it's in the second volume of the translated, uh, or the second volume of the Mukhtasar of Sahih Muslim, I believe it is, because I used to have this, and I, I, and I recall that being the second volume, that you'll find the chapter of leadership. And it explains for us these details. I'm going to briefly mention the details, then we'll get to reading some Nasus and, and so forth. That the khalasa taqul, that basically when ruling by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, first and foremost, no one, Ahl Sunnah, nor the Khawarij, nor anyone who is, who is really a Muslim will disagree about the obligation to rule by the Sharia. That's an obligation. So at least we have that understanding. So we can come to the table and deal with this issue. The issue is not whether to rule or not to rule. That is not the issue that we have against the Takfiris, with the Takfiris, or what have you. The Takfiris agree, and we agree that it's an obligation. Our ulama, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, from the Salaf, from Ibn Abbas, from the Prophet to the to the uh, to the, the Sahaba, Tabi'in, Tabi Tabi'in, and the ulama all the way until this time to ulama in our time, Imams of Ahl Sunnah in this time, like Imam bin Baz, uh, Imam Al Albani, Imam Sheikh Muqbil uh, bin Hadi Al Wadi, Imam uh, bin Uthimin, 
and before them, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, wa Imam Sa'di, wa Kathir Kathir, and the Mufti now in Saudi Arabia, Imam Fozan, all of these great Imams of Ahl Sunnah, there is no question about the obligation to rule by the Sharia. But the issue is, between us and them, is that they make takfir of everyone for their mistakes in the Sharia, for their jahil about the Sharia, for their ta'wil in the Sharia, and perhaps they are, a, a lot of times you'll find many of them are ignorant of the details with regards to that. Now, let's take a look closely at this issue. These details, anytime you hear someone say there's details in the matter, and if you have the ability to check into those details, you need to find out where those details came from. Alhamdulillah, we've been able to deduce that. We don't just say, okay, Imam bin Ba said this, Imam uh, al-Albani gave this tafsil, uh, Imam bin Uthameen said this, Imam uh, Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi said this. No. But where did they get those details from? Now, now we can talk about the issue. The details about ruling by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, what he has revealed, and Im many Imams before them that have greater status than him, Imam Ibn Qayyim and, and, and Kathir, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah himself, w gave the details that when someone is ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, for one, it's a major sin. Number two, it is kufr. Number three, it is not the kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam unless there are other issues, meaning that they choose this law over the Sharia. The meaning they, they believe the sh th their law is better than the Sharia, or they believe their law is the same as the Sharia, or they uh, think the Sharia and their law is the same. Those are some of the details regarding this issue that if a, a leader rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, out of sinfulness, out of weakness, and so forth, but however they believe the Sharia to be better, or what have you, then they are not outside the world of Islam, they've done a major sin. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah, because Ahl Sunnah doesn't make takfir of the people for doing the major sins, unless it's something that's known by necessity to take you out of the fold of Islam, if someone steps on the Quran intentionally. We know that this person has no respect for the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and doesn't think of it as divine, so this is, by necessity, will take a, full, a person out of the fold of Islam. However, those issues of making takfir on a specific individual, even if it's the government, requires aqama alayhi al-hujjah. And this you will find in so much. If the person who wrote this, uh, who, who, who brought this quote uh, from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, if they would go to his Mijmu'ah Fatawa, and I've read it countless times because our Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Ibrahim al-Rahili, Hafidullah Ta'ala, taught us in this issue of takfir. We, you know, we studied it with him in his book, Mokif Ahl Sunnah Min Ahl Bidah Wal Ahwa, in detail. And countless quotes of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah about Aqama alayhi al hujjah that you don't make takfir of someone unless you establish the proof on them. You've given them the evidence and uh, that they understand the hujjah. And this is another issue of ikhtilaf, but that is bil ikhtasar. Now let's go to the text. Let's see where they got these details from. Are these details from them? Are these details from those scholars who those takfiris don't accept? Or can we go to someone before them from the mutaqaddimin? Meaning, all the way up to the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Let's see what uh, Ibn Abbas and Tawus wa Ata, what they say, these uh, Sahaba, tab and, and Tabi'een, or possibly Itba'a Tabi'een, I'm not sure the manzil of all of them, but they uh, are from the first three generations, the Qurun al-Mufaddala. They were students of the Sahaba, or students of a Tabi'i. Let's see what they have to say. Let's look at the ayat. We'll go to Tafsir al baghawi about this very important ayat where Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, Woman lam yahkum bima anzal Allah fa ulaika humul kafirun. Whoever does not real, reveal, uh, whoever does not rule by what, uh, whoever rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, fa ulaika humul kafirun. Then they are disbelievers. That's one of the verses. Another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika hum. So Allah calls them fisk, fasiks, calls them uh, oppressors, and also classifies them as kafirs. Let's see what the ulama, how do they understand these nusus? And that's imperative. It isn't about us. It isn't about how we understand as later generations. Do we have more uh, 
knowledge and fadl than the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ask yourself if you come up with an answer other than know that we do not have more knowledge and more hikmah and more wisdom and more benefit and greatness than them, then you're okay. But if you uh, but if you say yes, we do have more fadl or we have more knowledge, we have a better understanding. My Sheikh Abu Qatada, my Sheikh Abu Hamza, my Sheikh Faisal, my Sheikh Tekfiri Fulani, my Sheikh, uh, you know whoever, that they have a better insight into these verses and how to practice them uh, 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 on the leaders, then you better question your Islam. You need to question your Islam and go back to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and go to the Nasus of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where you'll find where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about the Quran al-Mufaddala, Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُلُونُهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُلُونُهُمْ The Prophet Sallallahu said, The best of those people is those people of my generations, then those who, uh, then those who after the, come after them, and then those who come after them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Letting us know those first three generations of the Salaf Asali, the Asal of the Salaf Asali, meaning the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Witba'a Tabi'een. And then those who follow them ala ihsan ila yawmuddin, then they are, they make intisab to the salaf. Then they are uh, associated and, and consider themselves from following the methodology of the salaf asali. They are not the salaf asali, but they are salafiyun. They are, they yantasib ila salaf. They follow the madhab of the salaf asali. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. So what did they, what did the, those uh, ulama of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu say? Here's what Imam Baghawi said about that ayat. Ulaika humu kafirun. He said, Wadhalimun wal fasakun kullaha fil kafirun. He said the Zalimun and the Fasakun, Zalimun meaning like maybe oppressive uh, oppressors, Fasakun meaning like wicked sinners, all of them are from the Kafirun. Then he said Waqil, and he said it's also said, meaning it's said from some of the Salaf. He ala nas kulluhum. So this is imperative for us. That this Hukum is upon all of the people. It isn't restricted to leaders. So those tekfiris, and by Allah, I'm swearing by Allah, that I know so many from my, my city in particular, from the past up until now, many of them, they don't pray. They busy themselves. Instead of knowledge, they, they, they tell me this ulam, these ulama are, are murjia, and these ones are kafirs, and this one's a, a scholar of the hukam, and they talk about jihad day and night. But they busy themselves with video games all the time. The first thing they will ask you, where are the nasheet, uh, anasheet, the, the, the musical songs or chants, uh, Islamic chants. Uh, some of them are well known for their pornography and annually committing zina. Where is the ruling by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law in that? That's what you have to ask yourself. Most of these guys that really busy themselves with this, they don't have time for ibadah. They're too busy making takfir of everyone else. But let's go to the nasus. Let's go to the evidences. Let's get back on track. Qala Imam Baghawi, wa qala Ibn Abbas. Then he said, and Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Do we have any doubt about who Ibn Abbas was? Wa ta'wus, rahimahu wa ta'ala. What did they say about this ayat? They said, Laysi bi kufr, yun kulan al milla. This is the first statement they said about this ayat. They said, This is not the disbelief that takes you outside of the religion. This is what they said. Allah said, Woman lam yahkum bima anzalullah fa ulaika humul kafirun. The Sahaba, they were the closest to the Prophet. This is how they understood these verses. This is how we take our understanding. He said, they said, Ibn Abbas, wa Ta'us, they said, Laysa bi kufri, yankulan al milla. This is not the disbelief that takes you out of the fold of Islam or out of the religion. Bel. If he does it, then he is a kafir. Now, let me explain what it means here. That if they do it, then they're a, a, a kafir. Here, they're explaining the kafir, meaning in the language. And then I'll show you the evidence why we know this is the case. Meaning that if someone drinks water, we could say they're a person who drinks. If a person eats, they're a person... If a person eats... Uh, as people need to eat, they are eaters, for example, using the language 
to describe. So a person who falls into an act of disbelief is a disbeliever. That isn't ala itlaq. That doesn't mean that they're outside of the fold of Islam. It means that they are falling into the either the major form of disbelief or the minor form of disbelief. And that's how it shows us from the angle of the language. A person who uses a computer, he's a computer user. Okay, this is using the language as evidence. Now let's go and see, and they explained their meaning in the first statement. They said, They said, this is not the disbelief that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Rather, the person who does it, they are, they have disbelief or they are a kafir. But then they say, But not like the one who is disbelieved in Allah and the Day of Judgment. So their statement alone, يُفَسَّرْ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضُ This is why it is important. Two things I want to bring up. You have to study with the scholars. Number two, and be cautious about what you're reading. There are so many books out there. And even if you know Arabic, be careful. Do not make judgments on your own if you haven't studied with Ahl Ilm. Plus, we're not qualified to be making fatawa and this and that and the other. But even, especially comp complex books like Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah's books like Mijmu'a Fatawa and stuff, don't just, you don't just jump into those books and then start making a hukum. Fine, you're reading it, you're enjoying, you're understanding something, you may have questions, ask. Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Because what happens is we have people who cut and paste. They take part of the fatawa of one of the a'imma, and then they try to practice it on the people. But they didn't finish the fatawa. This is what happens countless times with the fatawa of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And one person that was very famous for this was the guy Faisal uh, in the UK, the Faisal Jamaiki. The guy was famous for this. He'd say on page 72, Mejmu fatawa. And he'd give you some statements of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He didn't even finish reading the next page. On page 73 though, it gives, it's, that, that was Mujmil, then came Mufassal. Then came the details. First it was general, then the statement that explained the general came up and this is water than kitab illah wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all throughout you'll have some verses the verses they explain one another and this is even a, a minhaj in tafsir that we look to how the Quran explains uh, verses explain one another and then we go to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the tabi'een uh, so this shows us the important to have knowledge and to go back to the people of knowledge so that way you don't get lost in the text. It's beautiful. Read, listen, study those texts, and, but then ask the, the, knowledge, ask the people of knowledge. So again, this text here shows us So Ibn Abbas with Tawus who are ulama better than any ulama that we, we have of today. And especially those people who are fasiqun, those, those wicked sinners who are takfiris and their leaders. Abu Muhammad Muqtasi and other jokers, Bin Laden was one of them, but he wasn't even a person of knowledge. Not, not like the people, he went to Abu Qatada, and this is well known for fatawa. So Abu Qatada has much more manzil than him, and he's on Dalal, Dalal Mubin. So those people may have their fat, fatawa about these issues, but why don't, isn't it sufficient Ibn Abbas with Tawus? And let's see what some of the other tabi'een said. Qala Atta, he said, huwa kufrun duna kufr. He said, it is disbelief, the lesser type of disbelief. Kufr duna kufr, meaning the kufr, uh, which is less than the other kufr, letting us know what? That kufr is of two types, as we've said countless times. Kufr, there's kufr al-akbar, kufr al-askar. Shirk al-akbar or shirk al-askar. Um, zulm al-akbar or zulm al-askar. Nifaq al-akbar or nifaq al-askar. All of these categories of hypocrisy, of oppression, of sin, they have major sin and minor sin. Major disbelief and minor disbelief. Major shirk and minor shirk. What's the delil? We can go back to the tabi'een. Wuhuwa kufr duna kufr. Qal, wuhum duna vum. And he said, and vum duna vum. He said, is oppression less the, the, the lesser, the lesser oppression, meaning that oppression is of two types. Well, fisk duna fisk. And that fisk has two different types. The lesser of the two fisks. Showing that it's a major sin to rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, but that it does not always necessitate that the person who's done is taken out of the fold of Islam. And again, as the Salaf as say, this does not just apply to the leaders, it applies to me and you. It applies to how you rule your family. It applies to how you are as a teacher. 
It applies to your state council, what, what, every level of government, every le level of rulership, whether it's the ruler in the family, whether it's the ruler who gives parking tickets, every type of mas'uliya, every type of responsibility that a person has is applicable. Are you ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed? Are you taking rushwa? Are you taking uh, bribes? Are you doing this? وَقَالَ إِقْرَمَ مَعْنَاهُ He said, and إِقْرَمَ said, the meaning, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ جَاهِدٍ بِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرٍ The one who rules by other than what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, with arrogance, you know, is firm on that type of ruling, and, and is disregarding the sharia totally, it has no, doesn't care about it, is arrogant and, and uh, striving on that. Then they have disbelieved. Woman Akarabihi, Walam Yakumbihi, for who a volum fasik, and the one who uh, agrees with it, but then they're not ruling by the Sharia. Then they're a volum fasik. Isn't that sufficient for us? Aren't the statements of the Salaf Asali? Isn't that enough of a hujja? Now let's go. There's many more details I could have read. But let's let's finish it. Wusu'ila Abdulaziz ibn Yahya al Kanani on having al ayat. So also uh, Abdulaziz uh, al Yahya al Kanani was asked about this verse. Fakal inha taqa ala jami al ma anzal Allah la ala baghu. They had a beautiful, this beautiful jidnan, very beautiful statement. He said that this ayat is regarding every single one who does not uh, rule by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, not on just some of them. So that shows us it's not just the leaders we should watch out, but we should watch out for your shaykh, and you watch, should watch out and fear Allah yourself. Are you ruling your family by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed? Are you being kind and gentle and, and, and practicing the sharia in your household? Are you praying? Are you establishing the prayer with your children and your wife? Or are you just busy making takfir and watching uh, uh, the Flintstones and whatever else you're watching on TV and the soap operas. Is that what you're busy with? Or are you busy ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed? وَكُلُّ مَنْ لَمْ يَحْكَمْ بِجَمِيعِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرْ ظَالِمْ فَاسِقْ Then he said, whoever does not rule, uh, rule by everything what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, then he is a kafir, volim, fasik. And, and we know the details from before, from those ulama like uh, Ibn Abbas, with Ta'us, wa Ikrama, wa ghayra. فَأَمَّا مَنْ حَقْ مَنْ حَقْمَ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ مِنَ التَّوْحِيدِ وَتَرْقَ الشِّرْكِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْكَمْ بِبَعْدِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّرَاعِ لَمْ يَسْتَوْجِبْ حُكْمْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ So the person who uh, rules by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, the Sharia, and Tawheed, and leaving shirk, then they leave off some of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, revealed for the, you know, some of the rulings of the Sharia, then they're not included in this ayah, meaning they are not a disbeliever. وَقَالُ ulama, And then the ulama say, and this is from who? This is from Imam Baghawi. Imam Baghawi died in 516 Hijri. He died um, 900 years ago. 900 years ago. This is the claim of those people way before us. Why can't we accept that? He said, وَقَالَ ulama. He said, the ulama of his time and before his time say, هَذَا إِذَا رَدَّ نَصْ حُكْمِ اللَّهِ عِيَانًا عَمَدًا فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفِيَ عَلَيْهِ أَوْ أَخْتَى فِي تَعْوِيلِ فَلَا He said, and that's the case as far as the person uh, leaving the fold of Islam. This is the person who refuses the, 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 the ayat or the text, and they they have the intention of refusing. You know what I mean? They have qas, they, they do it I'm intentionally refusing the text. Allah says, rule, uh, rule by His law. The Prophet ﷺ said, listen, hear and obey uh, uh, Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, but they say, absolutely not. I'm ruling by what I, my democracy is much better. I'm doing it. This person, khalas. It's clear they've left the fold of Islam because they have intentionally ruled. But then he said, "Fa'amma man khafi alay." So the person who uh, is not aware of this hukum, you know, he, he doesn't know the hukum. Oh, akhta, or he made a mistake. Fi ta'wil fala, or he made a mistake in his misunderstanding of the text then no, they are not a disbeliever. These are some of the details, and this is the details from the Salaf al the Salaf of this Ummah. And we have to accept it. Here's what the person wrote to me and said, and then we'll read quickly in Arabic and we'll end. So they said, what do you think about this quote? 
And it is known by necessity in the deen of the Muslims and by the agreement of all the Muslims that whoever follows a sharia, they use the term follows, follows a sharia other than the sharia of Muhammad wasallam, then he is a disbeliever and it is like the kufr of the one who believes in some of the book and disbelieves in some of the book. And then they say a fatawa. So they meant Mijmu'a fatawa, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and they quoted in the 28th volume. Unfortunately, I don't have that exact uh, volume, but alhamdulillah, I was able to find the quote as well in another text. So we'll read exactly what Shaykh al-Islam said, and we'll look at, there is a, a small um, issue in their translation, I will say. So they, here, here's what uh, Shaykh al-Islam said here. Uh, he, he mentioned that that it is a ijma for the people قال ومعلوم بإضطرار من, من دين المسلمين وبإتفاق جميع المسلمين أن من سوغ سوغ الاتباع شريعة غير شريعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو كافر جميل Here's, This is the statement that they um, they translated and the translation in general is pretty accurate. That women were ma'loom bi itrar. And it is known by necessity from the religion of the Muslims and agreeance of all, in agreeance, in accordance with the agreeance of all the Muslims, Jimmy al Muslimin, that anna men sawagha ittiba sharia. Sawagha, this is the issue that I have with their translation. They said follow, meaning that anytime someone follows, but sawagha, saga yusawagu. Uh, this being the 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 conjugation of the verb means to be uh, whoever formulates makes or fashions or creates so this is this makes a, a bit difference of a translation that this refers to the person who is making a new law formulating a new law creating a new law but they said follow and the one evidence that I would, uh, in accordance with that, would say, which I would question their translation of follows, is that all the texts we just read from the Salaf al-Saleh, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, gave us evidence to show that it isn't simply of just making a mistake and following another sharia, or uh, even intentionally following another sharia, but feeling sorrow in knowing that you are you are in the wrong, but out of your weakness, you're judging by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. As Ibn Abbas said, that is the kufr duna kufr. Or it is the, the uh, this is the, uh, the statement of Tawus and Ibn Abbas that they said that uh, this is not the disbelief that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. So letting us know that ruling itself by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed doesn't always take you out of the fold of Islam. However, the way the people have quoted uh, Shaykh al-Islam, and I would say there's uh, kind of a misquote there, that they say uh, in agreement of the Muslims that whoever follows a sharia, I would say that this is referring to the person who legislates, legislates other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, that if they do this and the details we've mentioned by Ibn Abbas and some of the Salaf and then our ulama of today and all throughout history, Ibn al-Qayyim speaks about this, I believe extensively in Alam al muwaqi'in and many of the books, they mention about the details that, uh, meaning that someone who is following or someone who is even ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals that they're not always out of the fold of Islam because for example someone who takes rushwa if you go to a judge and I've had this happen in a Muslim court even where the judge was being paid off by the uh, the individual who uh, was had an arbitration with me and my translator heard this and bore witness the judge asked at the end, how much are you going to give me out of the settlement? So the judge ruled in their favor. That doesn't take the judge out of the fold of Islam. The judge was not a disbeliever for this. 
unless they believed, of course, that this is totally permissible and, and, and so forth. They make it lawful. But in fact, that they ruled by other than what Allah revealed in order to gain some monetary gain that didn't take them out of the fold of Islam. And many of the ulama, they speak about this extensively in their books. And you should go back to those books if you still have issues with that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan